Okay, so as the popularity of the Gemini and the open AI, bi-directional APIs has taken off, people are now starting to look much more at building voice apps. And of course, the downside of using an external API, whether that's OpenAI, Google, or even things like Eleven Labs, is you're having to basically send your data out there. So many people, including myself, are still on the hunt for a really good local TTS system. In today's video, I'm going to talk about one that I've been playing with and using on my local computer to do a variety of different tasks, all running locally and even being able to run without a GPU. So the text-to-speech model that I'm talking about is Kokoro 82M. And this is basically a very small text-to-speech model that is getting really outstanding results. So there is no blog post for this. There is no fancy startup announcement or press release or anything. This is literally just a model that's been released on Hugging Face and on GitHub. And it's just taken off as people have started to play with this. Now, one of the reasons that it has taken off is because it's performing so well in the TTS arena on Hugging Face. So if we look at the leaderboard on the TTS arena, we can see that Kokoro is by far the number one best ranked TTS system here. Obviously that's open and that you can actually access the weights. Okay, so there is a Hugging Face space up where you can try this out. You can see that this is, is it here? I've, I've basically chosen the voice Sky and I'm just generating. Hi there, everyone. This is Kokoro. Hi there, everyone. This is Sky from Kokoro. Okay, so you can see that they've got both American voices and also English voices. If you want to pick out of an English voice, you can come and do that. Hi there, everyone. This is Delta from Kokoro. And here you can see they've also got some voices for French, for Japanese, Korean, and, and Chinese in here. So if you just want to try it out, come in here and have a play with it. So while there's no fancy blog posts or anything like that about this model at the moment, we can see some interesting information about it. We can see that, okay, this is trained on less than a hundred hours of audio, which is pretty amazing. And it seems that the architecture is based on this style TTS2, which actually has a repo up online and a whole paper about it if you want to actually go and see it. So one of the cool things about this project is that it seems to have taken off quite quickly. So not only you know, have they released uh, weights with this, there seem to be plans to make the next version of this and to train it on more data to get it to actually be even better than it is now. One of the interesting things out there is that the way that model works is you've got the actual model and then you've got embeddings in what they're calling a voice pack. Now, they're offering to make a voice pack for the particular voice you want if you just contribute data to the next training run of this. So if you're interested in that, you definitely should come in here and have a look at it. On top of this, the community has already started building a number of external projects around this. So one of them that is really good is the Kokoro Onyx GitHub repo. I'll talk about that in code and show you actually how I use that to run the model locally. Also, there's an interesting project, Kokoro Fast API TTS. And the idea here is that this is basically creating a fast API endpoint that emulates the open AI compatible speech endpoint. So if you've already got things set up to use the open AI voices, you can just swap them over with this here. And then another one that looks really interesting is a whole inference system for Rust, which is definitely worth checking out if you're looking at putting this into production for speedwise, etc. So let me walk you through the code. I'll go through a collab version at the start just to explain how things work, etc. And then I'll show you how I'm running a local version using the Onyx inference system in here. Let's jump in and have a look. Okay, so like I showed you before, they've got some guide code that you can actually get started with in Colab. That's what I'm using here. I'm going to walk through you quickly, like how you can use it, talk a little bit about it, and then we'll talk about making custom voices as well. But if you want to make some custom voices, there are a few ways that you can do that here. All right. So first off, you need to understand that you've got two main components here. You've got the model, which you're going to be running things through. And then you've also got an embedding for each of the voices. So each of the voices has its own embedding, which gives it the characteristics of that voice. So you can see this first one that they made for the leaderboard thing, I think, was basically a combination of this Bella and Sarah voices. Another interesting thing in here is if the voice is American, it will start with A. If the voice is British, it will start with B. 
and it, they're saying that they're going to release more voice packs, which basically means they're going to release more embeddings of different voices that you could use in there. So obviously they've got the sky voice in here, which is very similar to a famous voice. And you can see that if we just go through and run this, sure enough, we can just play with this. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if they'll lead a good life. They haven't even been born. Okay, you can see, sure enough, we've got the voices out there. Now, we've also got, because the way the model is trained, it's actually trained on phonemes. These are the actual phonemes that are there. And I think it can use both British and American phonemes for different pronunciation, et cetera, in there. All right, if we wanted to change the voice, now we can either come up here. For example, if we want to use the sky voice, we can come in and run and use that. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if they'll lead a good life. They haven't even been born. Okay, that gives us the sky voice in there. If we want to use one of the male voices. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if they'll lead a good life. They haven't even been born. Okay, so that's how you can just generate audio. Now, if you want to save the audio, here's basically what you can do. You can just convert it to a web file. It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if they'll lead a good life. And sure enough, if you want to see that in here, I've caught that output web. You would just come in here and download that if you want to use that. All right, so the next thing up is that if we look at the voices that we've got, for each voice, we've got this embedding, all right? So we've got uh, a tensor shape that's 511 by 1 by 256 in there. And so if you want to blend voices, we've got a, a number of different ways that we can blend voices. So if you look at here, we're going to load three different voices, and you'll see that all I'm changing is the voice pack in there. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. So that gives us the first voice. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. This gives us the second voice. And then the, the third one is a guy, just so we've got something that's clearly different. It's an unanswerable. All right. To blend these, we basically want to sort of merge the two tensors together. And we can do that in a variety of different ways. So if the simplest way is going to be doing something like an average. So we just add the two together and divide by two. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. But you can see that often when we do that, it's going to sound very much like one of those voices. So really what we're trying to do is interpolate between these two voices. So there are a number of ways that you can try doing this. One is that you can try like a weighted average. So if we try like a weighted average, we can pick like how much of one voice do we want versus the other voice. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn. Okay, so you can see there, we've now got a waiting voice of the first voice, Emma, and the guy, Lewis, in there. So we've got this, basically, this weighted version in here. Now you can play around with the weights and try different things like that. That will certainly get you some interesting results. The other way is we can just start trying to interpolate between these. And there are a few ways that you can do that as well. If we start off by trying to, you know, interpolate between one voice and the other, you'll find generally that the voice will stay the same for a long bit, and then it will change quite quickly to the other voice. So you're constantly trying to find that sort of sweet spot in there. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if... So this one here is starting to give us a new female voice. That's not quite the Emma voice, not quite the Isabella voice in there. The sort of final way I'll show you in here is that you can do what's called spherical interpolation. The idea for this actually comes from things like StyleGAN, where you would find that doing normal linear interpolation wouldn't get as good results. You wouldn't have as much control and stuff. So I think it was like the StyleGAN 3 paper or one of the papers around that sort of worked out that one of the best ways to do this was spherical interpolation be between these. So I've put a, a simple example of this here. You can really play with it to get lots of you know, different examples. But you can see now we can make a voice. How could I know? It's an unanswerable question. AGI is like asking an unborn child if... That's fundamentally between the guy and the soft girl. 
or the guy and one of the female voices in there. So you can take the voices that they've got in the voice packs and mix them to create new custom voices. And all you need to save and just load is this new tensor that's in there. So you'll see when we look at this, it's going to be the exact same shape as the actual voice pack embeddings that are in there. So this allows you to make some extra voices if you want to play with this. If you really wanted to get serious about this, you could actually just train up a model that goes from voice to embedding. It doesn't require a retrain of their TTS model. It just creates new embeddings in there. That's a little bit beyond this tutorial. So anyway, you can play with it in CoLab. It works really well in here. One of the things I was going to show you also the Onyx version, but I'll show you that actually running locally because I kind of feel like if you're going to use it locally, you're probably better to use the Onyx version rather than just the stock standard PyTorch version. So let's take a look at that. All right, so if you want to run this locally, I think one of the best ways to do it is to use this Kokoro Onyx package. And this has been put together by, I think it's the White Eagle. Cool package, very cool package. They're basically, because people have already released the Onyx version of the model as well, and the embeddings are going to be the same, what they've done here is just make it so that it's easy to get it going as a Onyx package, which you can then run you know, really fast on your computer. So I'm using a Mac mini here. You'll see that it runs way faster than real time, etc. in here. All right. So the key thing you want to do is basically just pip install this Kokoro Onyx, and then make sure that you've got UV installed. If you don't know what UV is, go and have a, a look at it. You can just do brew install UV on Mac. I'm not sure about Windows. You'll need to look into that. But then you can basically just set up a virtual environment with UV, install the two packages, and then it will basically just create the whole sort of setup for you. The two things that you need to basically copy across are going to be the actual Onyx version of the model and the voices JSON with the embeddings and stuff in there. Once you've copied those across and got this set up, there are a bunch of examples in here that you can actually use. So they've got some really nice different examples of with and without the phonemes, et cetera. And as I'm recording it, literally, it seems like they're still updating new examples as they go along. So once you've got that done, you can just use their hello example in here, which you're going to basically want to just set up. You can put the voice that you want to use. You can put the text, you can set a speed, et cetera. And then literally to run it, you just use UV run. It will go through and it will generate the audio out. You can see there it's already generated in there. And if I click on this, we can see that we've got. Hello, Sam. How are you doing today? This audio was generated by Kokoro. We've got the generated audio there, which you can use. So you can set this up as something that you just call anytime you want to use a TTS system, etc. Makes it super easy for running this, very performant for doing it all. And like I showed you before, you could use any of the blended voices, et cetera, in here as well, if you wanted to do something like that. So one of the cool things that I like about the Kokoro is not just that how good it is quality wise and stuff like that, but it's also actually very easy to get started to be able to use this on your system a lot better than a lot of the previous open TTS systems that we've seen in the past for this. Anyway, so have a play with this. As always, I'll put the collab and the links in the description so that you can get started and play with it yourself. Let me know in the comments how you actually want to use this. We certainly could take this and combine it with a speech to text system or an ASR system to then start be able to have a local agent that you could have a conversation with. And don't forget the cool thing in this way is that you don't have to pay for any APIs to be able to do any of that. All right. As always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.